I'd like to welcome you to the 10th annual CC Lee lecture. Uh, the lecture was created by the department uh, upon CC's death to uh, allow us to remember uh, both the man and the work and his work. And so this is meant to honor both CC's work and CC Lee, the man. Uh, the, the, uh, I want to welcome especially Carol, uh, his daughter, and uh, all the, the other guests. I, I see there are a, lot, a number of people in the room that don't usually go to our seminar, so uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, uh, I was talking to Masatoshi this morning, and uh, uh, I realized that I had uh, made a bad, uh, a, a, an error in terms of the introductions because uh, although Ilias will uh, give the formal introduction, uh, uh, it really doesn't speak to what Masatoshi Ne does and has done. Uh, so I quickly uh, went on Google Scholar. <laughs> and uh, uh, fortunately, Google Scholar has everything. Dr. Ne is. Uh, uh, is interested in evolution, uh, molecular evolution. Uh, he is, uh, <clears throat> he's uh, written a, a few papers, 100 and, 106 I believe, uh, and they've been cited a few times, 171,728. So uh, he's fairly well known in population genetics, in uh, molecular evolution. Uh, he's developed many of the theoretical uh, models uh, that people use to, to analyze the data. His, uh, his students, he has a, a number of uh, very successful students. Uh, this gives you an idea of some of the, the papers that he has written, and uh, you'll see they've been cited a few times. Uh, there's, so uh, the, uh, uh, he's developed software for, for uh, 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 analyzing uh, molecular evolutionary data. He uh, wrote a book in, uh, 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 that's been cited some uh, 12,000 times on uh, the molecular genetics, molecular evolutionary genetics. Uh, and these, these uh, uh, methods of uh, estimating distance, uh, estimating many uh, population genetics parameters <coughs> Uh, were developed by Masatoshi or by his students. So as you can see, uh, I, I, I will only show a few of these, but uh, he's uh, very accomplished and uh, we're uh, uh, very uh, privileged to have him uh, here with us today. Uh, and I'll give it, turn it over to Ilias Cambo to give the formal introduction following the seminar. Uh, there will be a recession, reception in, uh, <laughs> in uh, room uh, 109 for those, for you can, uh, let me, just a second here. All right. Thank you, Bob, for your uh, welcome remarks. Uh, on behalf of the Department of uh, Human Genetics uh, and the uh, School of uh, Public Health, uh, I also welcome the, the family uh, and, and friends of Dr. C.C. Lee and our distinguished audience. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the speaker of the 10th Annual C.C. Lee Memorial Lecture, uh, Professor <coughs> Masatoshi Ne. Uh, Dr. Ney is the Amon Park Professor of Biology and Director of the Institute of Evolutionary Genetics at Penn State University. Uh, prior to coming to Penn State, uh, he was Professor of Population Genetics at the Center for Demographic and Population Genetics at the University of Texas Health Sciences at Houston. Uh, he was trained in quantitative genetics at Kyoto University, Japan and did his postdoc work at the University of California, Davis, and at North Carolina State University. Uh, Dr. Ney has received many honors uh, in his uh, distinguished career, 
uh, including membership in the National Academy of Sciences, an honorary member of the Japan Society of Human Genetics, is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences, and fellow of the American Academy in Arts and, and Sciences. He has received the Thomas Hunt Morgan Medal from the Genetics Society of America, an honorary doctorate from Mizuki University, Japan. He was the CC10 Distinguished Lecturer at the Fudan University, Shanghai. And in 2002, he was pre presented with the International Prize for Biology by the Emperor of, of Japan. Uh, he has published uh, uh, many, many highly cited papers, as Bob alluded to earlier, and a book entitled Molecular Population Genetics and, and Evolutions. Uh, I am uh, grateful that Dr. Ne accepted our invitation to deliver the 10th annual CCLE Memorial Lectures. Uh, the title of his talk is uh, Genomic Changes, Mutation Driven Evolution, and Complex uh, Characteristics. Without further ado, I introduce to you Dr. Ne. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, also, <coughs> I'm very much honored to give a lecture, CCD lecture here. I knew uh, CC for some time, and uh, he, he was a, uh, he has a lit, he wrote a book, uh, Population Genetics, uh, 1950 or so. It was uh, so popular. And uh, his book was uh, easy to understand. So many people uh, read it. I also read the book, and uh, I learned a lot from the book. And also, uh, I could see him uh, in, in, in some meeting, and then we had uh, a nice conversation. Uh, so I came here 19... 83? I didn't know that uh, when uh, she, she had a uh, uh, 70th anniversary. At that time, a uh, symposium was held. So at that time, I came here. So this is the second time. Uh, again, related to CCD. <laughs> so I'm uh, very much honored to give my lecture here. My talk is about evolution. I'm an evolutionist, not a human geneticist. However, uh, I think evolutionary biology is changing, at least in my view, has changed considerably. Uh, so I, I want to give my view of evolution uh, which may not uh, be similar to others, but uh, and then uh, uh, how that evolutionary bi biology is changing, that my, my uh, uh, primary object of this talk. Uh, and the second, however, I, uh, because this is a human genetics uh, department, so I thought I should say something about <laughs> <laughs> human genetics. So I'm not a human geneticist, so I, I, I may say some stupid things, but uh, please, please bear with me. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, today I want to talk about uh, uh, some of my recent books. I uh, recently wrote a book uh, called Mutation Driven Evolution. <coughs> And uh, this will be published uh, from Oxford University Press uh, in June. Uh, the purpose of this book is to show the mutation is the driving force of evolution, not natural selection. The natural selection uh, is of secondary importance. Uh, so this is uh, somewhat uh, uh, different from Darwinian 
theory. And, uh, and so uh, I don't know uh, how well this book will be received when it is published. There's a plenty of uh, Darwinian evolutionists. And they uh, uh, say all the time, selection, selection, selection. Not much about mutation. Uh, let's see. In this case, however, I want to uh, define, I want to include, and, I mean, uh, uh, many nucleotide substitution or gene duplication, chromosome or changes or genome duplication as a uh, mean of mutation. But my definition of mutation is bigger than that uh, just a single nucleotide substitution. Uh, first, that, uh, what, I don't know how many of you have read uh, uh, Darwin's origin, origin of Species. But, uh, 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 the recently, not many uh, students or even professors uh, don't read it. But uh, it is very important. He is a, he is a real genius. He knew so many things. Uh, but of course, at, at that time, his knowledge is still limited. He didn't know the gene. Gene I, uh, genetics uh, was di di discovered in 1900, uh, so he didn't know the genetics. And uh, uh, mutation, he didn't know. He made uh, some speculation, but he was wrong. Nevertheless, he uh, proposed natural selection is a, a main factor of evolution, as you know. And most textbook uh, said so. Uh, but uh, Darwin never proved the occurrence of natural selection in nature. He said, uh, you know, uh, domestic animal or plant, if you, you use uh, selection, artificial selection, many change occur. So uh, such change may occur in nature too. I think that is true. But in the case of uh, such artificial selection, uh, there is a, uh, that uh, uh, the human actually uh, create, uh, so not nature. That's, uh, again, that instead of God, that the human create. So that uh, uh, there was some difference. But uh, he had a trouble. Uh, in nature, uh, such uh, you know, uh, uh, creator exists or not. Uh, eventually, he came up with uh, natural selection, and uh, nat uh, so natural selection was thought to be non, uh, you know, non good. I mean, it's not good creation. So. Uh, he, his view was different. He, he considered more uh, mechanical uh, explanation of evolution. So he, but essentially many people <coughs> believed, I think, that uh, uh, he replaced God <coughs> by natural selection. So uh, in that sense, uh, his view was uh, accepted pretty well, of course. Many people, uh, uh, many people, ch uh, church people objected. Uh, but anyway, gradually, uh, his theory was accepted. Uh, but uh, always there was a prob uh, problem. Uh, uh, how the natural, natural selection is really effective? Uh, that was a question of, of gradual evolution. Also, that was a question. And then mutationism, uh, probably, most of you don't know uh, Hugo de Vries. And he proposed new species occur by single mutation, not by na natural selection. And then uh, he did the uh, experiment, and then I'll show you. Uh, so uh, this, uh, but this was depend, uh, uh, dip, uh, that, uh, uh, based on experimental work. So some people accepted, 
また soon it was rejected because single mutation cannot produce new species. And at that time, single mutation was considered just one, one gene mutation. And then Thomas Morgan, uh, he, he essentially rebuilt, he essentially father of genetics. And he showed that the gene are located on the chromosome. Uh, then uh, this genetic change produces uh, mutation, and then good <coughs> mutation was selected, bad mutation was eliminated, and then that, that was his idea. That, was, that is called mutationism. But uh, this mutationism was, was rejected again by neo-Darwinian uh, people. The idea was that uh, at that time most mutations were deleterious. So how the deleterious mutation can be useful for evolution? That was a big uh, argument. And then uh, people uh, started to say, uh, okay, there is a mutation occur, but the recombination occur something so that uh, uh, mutation is uh, just a uh, raw material. Natural selection creates a new uh, uh, character, innovative character. So that's uh, evolution of uh, But uh, then that, uh, however, still they try to get uh, uh, evidence of natural selection, but they had a lot of trouble to prove that the natural selection really occur. Uh, it is it is possible. It, it is easy to prove, but uh, uh, that is uh, the factor for the evolution of new species. That was the difficult things. And then uh, new molecular study was uh, started around the 1960s, and then that uh, first Kimura and Jukes King and those people showed that. Uh, uh, mutation uh, actually important for changing uh, molecule, amino acid change, were essentially uh, occur by the random drift of uh, mutation. That's what uh, they said. However, uh, they said morphological characters are still controlled by uh, this uh, neo-Darwinian uh, method. They, don't, they didn't extend it. But I thought uh, at the DNA level, uh, the molecular evolution and the phenotypic evolution is essentially controlled by the, the DNA. So essentially the same thing. That's what I thought. So I uh, proposed this idea uh, in 1975 first. And they didn't pay much attention to my, <laughs> to my uh, book. In 1987 book, I uh, spent one chapter, but again, uh, not much attention. So now I wrote one book. So that, that uh, <laughs> uh, I hope this time people pay some attention. Uh, the problem with natural selection is uh, this. You know, it, uh, it takes a long time. And the human life is uh, only, uh, scientific life is uh, maybe 20 years or 40 years or something. So it's it difficult to prove the entire process of natural selection. So it, uh, <coughs> and the most well-known example is uh, uh, this uh, dark form, dark form and then uh, white form of uh, pepper pepper moss, Biston betularia. And this was, uh, uh, at the time in, uh, in Britain, industrial revolution occurred around 1850, around that time. And then uh, around that time, they say, there was not black uh, moss, mostly white moss uh, around. And then after that, uh, uh, because of the uh, industrial re revolution, environment became very dark. And, uh, so now darker moss 
has a selective advantage because they thought a bird, bird eat, eat a distinct one. And uh, if it is not distinct, black one uh, will not be uh, eaten. White one will be eaten. That was the idea. And then according to JBS Holden, uh, this change occurred within 50 years, very rapid change. And uh, selection coefficient was 0.5. And uh, in the textbook, I think in evolution or in genetics, I think many, many such examples uh, discussed and then uh, that uh, uh, they are proof of natural selection. But uh, if you look at more carefully, and uh, uh, this This doesn't matter. This uh, uh, number four, five, uh, oh, number eight, seven. These are different species. Uh, one, two, three, two, six. This is a Biston betularia. This is the species many people studied. And then here, four, five, six are dark form. Uh, one, two, three are light form. And uh, uh, of course, at that time, there was uh, no molecular technique, so they didn't know how uh, genetically different. But uh, they believed they are genetically different, light form and the dark form, four, five, six. And uh, however, if you look at carefully, you know, there are some uh, continuous variations. For example, wing, wing of this one, uh, nine, number five, Number three, number four, some of the uh, right uh, compared with uh, six and uh, five, four and six. So they are really same, uh, the controlled by same uh, gene or not, that was not clear. Uh, recently someone studied uh, molecular basis of uh, this gene, uh, but uh, one paper appeared in Science, one in PROS Biology, PROS One, but they still had not really identified the gene. So uh, this was not a real proof. And then after, uh, around the 1950, already uh, dark moss was uh, prevailed nearly 100%. And then gradually, uh, uh, around the 1970, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Clean Environmental Act was uh, approved um, uh, by the British government so that uh, they started to uh, clean up the environment and then this moss declined. Uh, uh, black moss declined, dark form declined. And uh, so uh, again this was a proof. But uh, uh, there was a problem, there is a problem. Problem is a migration. You know, this moss can migrate uh, about 20 miles a, a, one night. And uh, it can blown away to uh, even uh, European co uh, continent easily. Uh, so uh, it can migrate a lot. So this is also uh, one scientist thought that uh, black moss tend to uh, go to black place. White moss tend to go to a uh, you know, lighter place. So there was some problem. So uh, still, uh, you know, right now, 2000, still uh, this uh, black moss are uh, uh, existing in some uh, uh, Birmingham in, in this area. They are, they are not, uh, dis they have disappeared. So that, uh, that was a problem. Same problem occurred another moss, uh, that uh, uh, Panachysia uh, dominula. In this moss also, initially it, look, it looked to uh, you know, decline, but later on still uh, the frequency goes up. So it, it, it doesn't, it hasn't, so if you consider long term evolution, million years or hundreds of hundreds of thousands of years, it's not really clear. It's difficult to prove 
the natural selection really occurred. Usually, uh, they say uh, that they study uh, 20 or uh, 30 years, and then selection this one is the selection coefficient, how selection coefficient changes, uh, that, that showed this one. And then that here, uh, in this case, effectively gene frequency hasn't changed. So balancing selection operating. So uh, some polymorphism is maintained. But uh, if you compare different species, the morphology is different. So if you consider long-term evolution, uh, gene frequency should have changed. But it was uh, difficult because human life is so short. And in some cases, uh, the selection coefficient was examined. Uh, this is Dick Lointon's paper. And that, uh, that uh, this one is a chromosomal variation, chromosomal type, two chromosome. This uh, CD standard, this one, another one, this chromosome. And then uh, each genotype frequency, uh, fitness, what uh, examined. And this was a standard. And then uh, uh, they, they, this shows, you know, every, every year, it, the fitness changes so much. Uh, so, uh, Dick Ruinton said that uh, there is no evidence of the, or no, I mean, no, no. Uh, there is no experiment in which experimentalists succeeded to show natural selection really occur. Uh, clearly, in nature. In, in laboratory, of course, uh, uh, it's easy, it was easy. Uh, then molecular, uh, molecular studies came out. Uh, this time, the uh, first, uh, first thing done was that, uh, to study uh, rate of uh, amino acid substitution. Amino acid substitution, uh, D, uh, synonymous substitution, DS. Uh, DA is an uh, amino acid, <coughs> DN is a uh, uh, non-synonymous substitution. And the nucleotide substitution, and here the time uh, fossil record, and then almost linearly, you know, uh, substitution increases. So this uh, suggests mutation is important, and then that, uh, uh, mut those mutations are fixed by the drift. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, nat a previous natural selection was a very short time. If you consider long-term evolution, it may, the selection may not be so important. That's a uh, conclusion. And also, uh, at a molecular level, you can study synonymous, non-synonymous. Synonymous means that uh, amino acid uh, alter the uh, nucleotide change. Non-synonymous doesn't change amino acid. And um, usually, this ratio, amino acid changing uh, nucleotide uh, divided by synonymous change, uh, this has a, this kind of distribution. In many genes, you know, uh, uh, genes, many genes are, uh, non-synonymous change is smaller. That means many genes, uh, Subjected to deleterious mutation. Uh, so, uh, this is a picture. And, uh, so, deleterious mutation, and uh, certainly, you know, you can see there are so many genetic diseases in human, human populations. Well, many, many uh, drosophila die out when they are young. Uh, so, uh, it is natural. And uh, let me skip this one. And so, uh, but around that time, 1960, 19, around 70, 1970, uh, Ono, Susumu Ono, well, the picture is here, uh, he's, he was my, my friend, he proposed that uh, the importance of uh, gene duplication. If you have gene duplication, 
the, uh, the duplicate, some of the duplicate gene may have a new function, so evolution can uh, occur. And uh, I also uh, wrote a paper in Nature, and I concluded that uh, there may be a great deal of gene duplication, and also nonsense DNA in today's vertebrate. Here, nonsense DNA is related to non-functional DNA. And so uh, recently, ENCODE project uh, you know, was criticized. Uh, uh, the ENCODE project said that uh, almost 80, more than 80 percent of gene uh, DNA are functional. And uh, many people, quite a few people, uh, criticized. And um, but, uh, my view also, there are many uh, non functional DNA. So uh, I think uh, I agree. Of course, uh, I agree with those, those criticisms. But the uh, uh, ENCODE project is a very useful study. They identify you know, some, some minor, even minor effects, uh, functional change. So it's important. And uh, then I proposed that uh, uh, um, you know, if the gene duplicate, you have multi-gene families, and how the multi-gene family evolved, and then, uh, I proposed a birth and death uh, evolution. Uh, I will discuss it. And uh, Ono, Ono is a very creative person. He proposed that 1960 gene duplication is so important for evolution. But uh, two years later, he says that uh, no, gene duplication <coughs> creates the same thing. So that uh, suggests that duplication, duplicate gene is not a real uh, creation. He said that uh, gene regulation is more important. For example, if you compare Drosophila larvae with Drosophila adult individual, uh, they are so different. Uh, even if the genome is the same, genome is the same. So, uh, uh, you know, adjusting gene, uh, uh, this gene expression pattern, you can produce very different organism. Uh, so, Ono suggested. Uh, gene uh, such uh, gene regression is an important factor of evolution, and also Sean Carroll is uh, very uh, famous about uh, pushing this gene regression idea. He often uh, gives the credit to King and Wilson, but uh, actually King and Wilson give credit to Ono, and I. Uh, Sean uh, Carroll doesn't know one of the uh, paper. Uh, they never cite. So that uh, even even that uh, 30 years, uh, you know, uh, time difference, you, you don't need a, every paper. So that uh, <laughs> uh, people short, uh, you know, they do Google search. And most of they uh, check the 10 years or 20 years, no more. And they don't uh, go back to uh, 40 years, or that, uh, I, you know, almost uh, no one goes back to uh, Charles Darwin. Uh, so uh, we, uh, the current uh, science is done in this way. That, uh, you have to produce many papers to get a grant. Without getting grant, you cannot get a tenure. So, uh, so uh, there is a such uh, pressure. Uh, uh, that's not a very uh, good uh, trend. Nevertheless, uh, University of Oshawa uh, won't have money. So that uh, you have to produce uh, many papers, get a grant, and then uh, you can stay uh, as a tenured professor. But, uh, but, uh, that's also uh, that's a good thing, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, the research becomes short-sighted. We should look at a more uh, long-term uh, change, and uh, that's what uh, 
uh, I think I did. Uh, when I wrote my book, I, it, I started from Charles Darwin, the police, so about uh, 150 years of history uh, were covered very, very short way. And then I discussed uh, this molecular aspect. One thing uh, important is a uh, haploid genome site, uh, the number of protein coding gene, and the relative number of nucleotide uh, non coding, uh, non -coding uh, DNA. In this, uh, let's see, uh, that, uh, according uh, gene number, in terms of gene number, uh, uh, Genome size can change. You know, that, uh, for example, Fugu. Fugu has a very uh, short uh, non coding region and very short uh, uh, that, uh, uh, intron, intergenic region. So uh, DNA is uh, small, but the number of genes is very large. <coughs> so uh, DNA content doesn't necessarily show the important, uh, the, uh, that correspond to number of genes. But the number of genes also gives you a funny result. For example, in the case of rice, rice has a, a large number, much larger than human, right? Uh, but, uh, uh, Many people probably wonder, rice is more advanced than human? <laughs> uh, that's a questionable. And, uh, so, oh, let's see. So someone, uh, uh, now uh, evolution is considered, at least I, I, I view, evolution is a process of producing a complicated organism, just like human or flowering plant or not the yeast or bacteria, it's more complicated organism. So in this case, how, how, how do you measure? One way is a number of cells, number of different cell type uh, is uh, considered as a measure of the complication of the organism. And uh, this one, a uh, white circle indicates a uh, number of cell type. No, 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 sorry, sorry. This column, uh, this column indicates uh, the number of cell type. And you this one here. Oh. This red one here. Oh. Uh, here at, uh, uh, this one, so some yeast is a very simple organism. And then that uh, RG, uh, rice is uh, relatively <coughs> simple in terms of the number of cell types. Uh, Rhabdopsis and uh, fruit fry, the human has the most, uh, <coughs> largest number of cell types. And uh, this DNA content is black pot. Uh, this point, DNA content, yeah, number of gene. Number of gene is not really com uh, correlated with uh, this, uh, this uh, that, uh, number of cell type. But uh, here, this white circle, uh, this shows some kind of correlation. And uh, uh, correlation is significant. And uh, that, uh, that white circle uh, means that uh, proportion of non-coding DNA. So non-coding DNA has something. And uh, that is related to com uh, so this uh, uh, complexity. So that uh, uh, non-coding DNA, uh, we know that many RNA uh, are produced and some transposon has a uh, phenotypic effect. Uh, so that uh, it is not uh, unthinkable. But of course, the real reason is not very clear. And another factor is that uh, if you consider each multi-gene family, uh, for example, 
IG ドメイン、イミノグルブ、イミノグルブリンドメイン、あなた、イミノグルブリンドメインに、なったら、ナンバーインクリーンです、ヒューマンハザラージェスナンバー、アンドオーソー、フィンガー、フィンガー、だったら、ザ・ナンバー、ユージャリ、イーチ・マルティ、コンシダ、イーチ・マルティジン・ファミリーズ、だったら、コンプレックス・オーガニズム・モア・ジンズ。So I think still, ジン・ジュプリケーション is important. Now that、uh, you go to f r e e z e and、uh, maybe you don't know him so well, but he is a person. You know,、uh, new species occurred by single mutation. That's what he claimed. And、uh, he did extensive study, experimental work.、Uh, that's an、uh, American uh, uh, that, uh, uh, Enocera, uh, American prim, uh, Evening Primrose, Enocera.、Uh, <coughs> f l o w e r i n g in Dutch, some wasteland, and he collected those、uh, evening、uh, primrose and then uh, studied uh, all the, uh, uh, they continued the uh, uh, offspring,、uh, tried to record. The same time, this is a Makiana, is the original type. This is,、uh, of course, produced a lot. But a new type appeared、uh, you know, in this case. And they call this one the, uh, uh, some kind of incipient species. So the, he didn't call、uh, this one the real species, but、uh, in the future, it may become species. And one of them here. Gigas. Gigas was special. But、uh, here, uh, this is、uh, Gigas. This is bigger than this original Ramakia now.、Uh, so more、uh, stocky. And、uh, later on, this was found to be tetraploid. Tetraploid, this one.、Uh, so、well, they You know, naturally they could produce offspring. They are real. So it looks like one new species. And so he,、uh, some chromosomal studies was done, and that、uh, later on it was diploid,、uh, a tetraploid, but some other one are not. And then that,、uh, however, soon after that, Some cytologists uh, discovered uh, this uh, Enocera is a chromosomal hybrid.、Uh, so, that, that,、uh, that kind of mutation is due to chromosomal changes. So, it is not a genic change. So, that's why you know,、uh, Dofri's idea was abandoned. That's not a real mutation. At that time, uh, Thomas Morgan was.、Uh, Producing so many mutations in Drosophila.、Uh, and the, he thought that genic mutation is a real mutation.、Uh, so, d o f r i s idea、uh, was abandoned. And, uh, but uh, later on, now, at the genomic age, many people studied in plant. Uh, that、uh, genome duplication, an、uh, ancient genome duplication. And、uh, there's a, a flowering plant, Sogam,、uh, with uh, you know, current, uh, rice and uh, current uh, flowering plant,、uh, most advanced in plant. And、um, this, oak, uh, this, gen uh, this Happen, uh, generated by genome duplication, polyploidization, so much. So, polyploidization was so important actually in the process of evolution. Another thing、uh, it was shown was that、uh, once polyploidization occurs,、uh, the gene number can, change, can be reduced. 
rather than in, uh, stay the same. The number can decrease, and then new species appear. So in other words, after polyploidization, uh, polyploid uh, is produced, after that, uh, genetic change, a lot of change occur. The gene number uh, decreases, and it, it becomes uh, uh, polyploid, uh, essentially polyploid segregation occur. But a new species can occur. So now that uh, also gene number uh, can be lost after, you know, duplication, yet that, uh, uh, then uh, new, new species are produced, uh, so uh, genome duplication is a very important process. Let's see, that uh, ENCODE project, uh, now said that uh, this is the earlier version, they said, uh, what is the gene? In old days, uh, when Mo, uh, Mendel uh, di uh, discovered uh, Mendelian inheritance, gene was an abstract concept. He, he didn't know anything about uh, substance. It was Morgan who, who showed that uh, it is a genetic substance, and then that located on chromosome. Uh, but uh, now, that was a gene. And the mutation of the gene is important. But uh, uh, now that uh, ENCODE says that uh, so many genes interact with each other, uh, so it's difficult to define one gene. His definition of, their definition of gene is the entire genome. Entire genome. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. You cannot, if you, you consider the entire genome, that's crazy. But, uh, but still, we have to consider uh, protein coding region to study. But yet, uh, so many genes are now interacting. Uh, so as you know, gene interaction, the drosophila, uh, this kind of morphological change uh, can occur by change in cis element. And in this case of uh, Particular back has a this fin that disappear in the lake in the ocean they detain this one this uh, occurred by uh, that uh, regulatory change uh, also if you consider eye development the complicated process of uh, gene interaction and then uh, gene interaction creates another interaction, so gene regulatory system is important. Uh, initially, initially uh, gene duplication was considered very simple. And uh, Ingram studied uh, gene duplication uh, that uh, <coughs> you know, new gene appear. Uh, all the time. So that's a divergent evolution. Yeah, this was the uh, England's idea. However, later on, Brown uh, uh, proposes a concerted evolution. The <coughs> gene interact with each other always, so uh, that they uh, become, they evolve as a unit. That is a concerted evolution. But uh, uh, in our study show that uh, actually some genes die out. Uh, they, they don't go this way. They go in another, in other words, uh, just in between. And some genes die out. And uh, so gene birth, birth and death process occur. Uh, and then that, uh, uh, this is the case, uh, MSC gene, and uh, in human, there are A, B, C loci, and they are highly polymorphic. But if you go to macaque, uh, tamarim, and then they have different genes. So genes are changing. 
but each species, there is a lot of polymorphism exist. And so, uh, that the, this immunoglobulin system too, uh, at, uh, in mammal or in vertebrate, uh, constant gene, J region, D region, variable B region exist. And then that uh, this variable region creates a lot of variation. Uh, but in a shark or in uh, region fish, there's no such thing. They are uh, uh, together. So evolutionary system, the uh, system is depend on the evolutionary lineage. And then even if we see a uh, right chain, there are alpha, beta, alpha, kappa, sigma chain uh, exist. But uh, this, uh, this also changes. Here in this case, uh, blood has a only lambda, and uh, reptile, kappa, lambda. Uh, so this kind of big change of but the organism of all right, they can survive without trouble. Uh, so, so that's a, a lot of change can happen. <coughs> oh, this is a more dramatic change occurs in olfactory receptor genes, you know, or smearing power. That's a, uh, Human has about 400, more than 400 functional gene, slightly more non-functional gene, but a lot of gene. And then some uh, mouse has more gene. And then uh, here the number, here that uh, in the case of human, Functional gene is non-functional gene. Functional gene is smaller than non-functional. But the uh, mouse, uh, functional gene is higher. Uh, cow, also extremely uh, Dog, for example. Dog is supposed to be very good in smelling. Uh, but uh, uh, they have many uh, uh, functional gene, but uh, many uh, the number is not as large as a cow. So some, something, uh, something uh, change, uh, the number change. And uh, uh, also depend on the adaptation. So whale, for example. Whale will live in the ocean, and they communicate uh, by uh, uh, echolocation system. So they don't need so much. You know, smelling system. So they, they lost many uh, uh, olfactory receptor genes. On the other hand, the mouse is a sniff around and get food. So they have more genes. Macaque uh, or human are more visual. We decide to find a uh, mate visually. So beautiful women are sought after. Uh, rather than good smelling uh, movie. <laughs> so so that, uh, that, that changed. Uh, anyway, however, the number of uh, uh, olfactory receptor gene varies from uh, p uh, person to person. Some person has a 50 gene, 30 gene, 30 gene more than that uh, standard. So variation is very large. Uh, this one is an uh, olfactory receptor gene. And the variation is very large, but everyone is survive. No problem, you know. So that uh, this is not really essential. Uh, so even if you have a smaller number, there are some, pa some person who cannot smell uh, 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 such person. But uh, still they produce offspring <laughs> pretty. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so, no problem. So there are some such complications. Yet, if you consider overall picture, still such things may be important. Let's see. I don't know how long I can speak. Just speak. Stop pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, I think we can.
Okay. But uh, uh, there are no, um, many more uh, things uh, that uh, you can explain by mutation rather than natural selection. But uh, I skip. Uh, in the case of human and a chimpanzee, here that uh, some uh, retrospective view. Human, many people believe uh, human was superior uh, to chimpanzee because we have higher brain power. And uh, they explain that this occurred because a uh, human moved to grassland and um, chimpanzee remained in the forest. Uh, so in the grassland, they evolved. Uh, why high intelligence? No one knows. But uh, anyway, that uh, explanation. But if you, if you consider very initial stage of the evolution, very initial stage around here, can you predict this lineage become human? This lineage become chimpanzee? I don't think anyone can predict. Even around here, that a uh, uh, human uh, chimpanzee, uh, it's difficult to predict. It, it is, it, it is uh, possible to study past, but it's difficult to study future. Future is very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. we, so, but we, we study evolution in terms of past change, not the future. Uh, so, uh, we are biased in this sense. So, uh, let me skip this one. A little bit about uh, cancer. <laughs> I'm not an uh, expert of cancer at all, but uh, recently I uh, looked at some uh, papers. I was interested. This one in the Howard <coughs> Tim paper. Howard Tim said that. The uh, ret retrovirus uh, or cancer. Uh, he considers uh, uh, whether natural selection is important, this, uh, increases a lot, or mutation is important. And uh, mutation just changes and then this become cancerous. And uh, he concluded mutation is the answer, not natural selection. But uh, still, uh, that, uh, this one is a liver cancer. Still, some population geneticists argue natural selection is important. And uh, so, but a uh, recent uh, nature uh, science paper argued that uh, uh, cancer, cancerous cell uh, become uh, cancer. Uh, but, uh, this is not the way now uh, change occur. It's uh, always a uh, uh, mutation occur in uh, uh, many different directions. So cancer search, uh, cancer cure become difficult. In this case, if you, cure, if you kill this cell, it's okay. But in this case, you have to kill everything. How do you do? That was the problem. That, that is discussed in the science paper. Anyway, what I said that uh, mutation is important and then natural selection is a secondary. Just a select a good one and eliminate a bad one. And uh, that's what uh, I said. And then, uh, uh, I guess uh, I cannot say. I better avoid, but uh, my message uh, you can read this one, but uh, my message is a uh, uh, mutation is a driving force of evolution. Driving force of evolution, and then that uh, natural selection is a secondary. Okay, so you have to evolution uh, to occur. You have to have a new mutation, and. Uh, so in this way, Darwinian theory is wrong. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and I say mutation theory is correct way to understand. But of course, <coughs> if you look at uh, most textbooks, they say natural selection is a factor of evolution. No one says mutation. And so if my book appear, uh, uh, I'm expecting a lot of criticism. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but I thought I, uh, I'm old. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, I have to die soon. And so I thought I should uh, say something what I, I have thought about. I have thought about this one for 40 years. So I decided to publish a book. Uh, I hope uh, you can take a look at and uh, whether I'm right or not, you can judge. <laughs> and I, uh, but uh, I'm considering long-term evolution, considered from Darwin to current molecular evolution, genomic evolution. But uh, still, I may be wrong. But uh, I want to hear your opinion from if you have a chance to look at the book. Thank you very much. Epigenetics? I, I think epigenetics. Ep epigenetics is very important factor. But epigenetics are also uh, at, at, uh, kind of mutation. But uh, you have to some gene change, and uh, that environmental factor affects uh, gene expression. But uh, here too, uh, uh, this is not uh, uh, environment change uh, evolution, uh, mo the genetic change. In other words, in the case of a turtle, for example, sex is determined by uh, temperature. But the temp uh, temperature actually trigger uh, the uh, development of male and female phenotype. Uh, this female ma uh, male phenotype is controlled by gene. So it's such mutation. But uh, trigger Trigger, trigger can happen many ways. Many different kinds of tr triggering gene exist. So one of them is uh, temperature. So I, I don't, uh, in my view, ep epigenetics uh, is the future of a study. Uh, yet uh, uh, you cannot change mutation theory. <laughs> uh, last question. Um, are there any um, testable uh, hypothesis coming from this um, change of view in terms of what's important? Yeah, that's a, uh, of course, you know, I, I showed you the cancer case. The cancer case, at, uh, initially, in old days, when, uh, around 1970, uh, mo most people believed a virus is a cause of uh, cancer. Uh, the gene mutation was not. So uh, Alfred uh, Knudsen proposed the uh, mutation theory about uh, eye cancer. He got a lot of criticism at that time. But now it is accepted. So, so uh, it your view uh, change and how to study also change. So in, if uh, my theory is correct, you don't have to worry about natural selection so much. Uh, study is the molecular difference between chimpanzee human uh, at molecular level. For why is that uh, uh, intelligence is different? Uh, so so I, I emphasize a more molecular study instead of uh, you know, population genetics uh, study. Uh, I'm a population geneticist, <laughs> but uh, yet. <laughs> I have to deny my <laughs> career. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, thanks again, Dr. Mayer.